thanks for being here. For a Java me talk is crowded, and we are going to talk about uh, using your old Java me device, not just phone but device in general, uh, to make cool projects. And I am Vinicius Sanger. I work with Java more than 10 years. I'm writing code since I was 30 years old. And I create a J-Home Automation project last year. We won a Duke's Choice Award. This year we are launching a new API called Things API. It's a brand new API for the Internet of Things, supporting Java ME, Java C, Java EE, Bluetooth, ZigBee, IP devices. And we are a company in Brazil called Global Code. It's a training company. And here is Marcelo. Please introduce you, Marcelo. Hello, I'm Marcelo Quinta. I'm from Brazil, too. Uh, I'm one of the mobile contributors from the Things API. Uh, well, where's my mic? Here? Everybody can, can oh. listen. We don't need okay. a mic. Uh, <laughs> I have a master's degree in computer science. I, uh, well, I am a mobile developer uh, since 2007. I'm the Triangle fo founder, uh, a company that builds mobile apps for iOS, Android, Java ME, Blackberry, this kind of platforms. Did uh, I forget some, some of them? Uh, I'm, my profile, I'm more focused on hardware and Java SE and EE development, while Marcelo uh, used to work more with mobile, so yes. we are together to 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 mix both things and show some cool projects. Yeah. So we are going to show how to give a new life for your Java ME device, or at least you will not uh, uh, leave anybody to drop a Java ME device in a trash because it can be very useful. Uh, we would like to talk about some open source hardware initiatives and explore some Java ME hacking techniques. And we have some toys to make a, a demos, if Demogod allow us. So the agenda, we are going to make an introduction, talk about open source hardware, Arduino, things API for Java ME, and the demos. So we believe that we have three different waves happening in the world. One wave is the new uh, device generation. It's crazy device, like a Android device, the Samsung S3. It's a crazy device. You, you walk with a data center in your pocket compared to 10 years ago. And we have touch screen, OLED, and everything happening in this direction, the modern device. By the other hand, we also have open source hardware that is very growing very fast, especially here in the US. We see companies like SparkFun selling a lot of stuff for developers that want to do the projects by themselves. And we have Arduino. Sunspot was already one of the first open source, famous open source hardware running Java. Raspberry Pi, big old board. And I just bought this week uh, Electric Imp. It's an ARM Cortex N3 wireless is inside a SD card and it cost thirty dollars. So it's a crazy that? thing. What was that? Electric imp. Oh okay. Oh, yeah. So and we also have in other hand what we are calling as old but gold devices, hardware generation, the old device that uh, is still very useful for different kinds of projects. Like, I, I love the Nokia E71 phone. It's a great phone, very uh, strong phone. Uh, the Java ME runs perfect <laughs> inside. <laughs> and we have um, Sunspot or Oracle Spot. Does some, someone had a Oracle Spot or Sunspot? You? Okay, <laughs> oh, nice. 10% of the... <laughs> 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 and we have other boards running uh, Java ME that you can use to make uh, hacking projects. 
Just to remember how NASA launched the moon and the computer behind Apollo, um, the clock was 2 megahertz, and they have 4 kilobytes of memory, and they, they went to the moon, and we are using quad-core devices to play Angry Birds. <laughs> so, this device, they still, they are very powerful. We can do many things with this kind of device. It's not a tennis, but the, 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 the old one, the used one, uh, can be very useful, and the power of processing is very, is very good compared to, to Apollo computer. Yeah, and we have uh, more than 3 billion Java ME pocket controllers around the world. <laughs> we can see at the Oracle site. We checked today but, yeah. half of population of the world you need to have a Java ME device. 3 billion with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, camera, some sensors. Wow. Better than a, the rock pocket from Apollo 11. And as you can see here, is the it's a market share from December 2011. You can see the Symbian OS, iOS, Samsung, Android, Sony Ericsson. As you can see here, uh, it's a mobile operating system, right? Mobile, mobile operating systems. But the Java ME is not exactly an operating system. It's a platform supported by Symbian, supported by, by Bada, Ring, uh, Sony, Black, Blackberry OS. So it's good for us. We, have, we are not so smaller than Android and iOS. We are there. We are 3 billion and we are there. Uh, in resume, uh, we are more than 50% of the devices in the world. Uh, with the Symbian, plus Ryan, plus other 55.2. People are not only having, or not buying Java ME cell phones, but still using it. We have mobile. Uh, who here have a Java ME phone or a Java ME old phone? <laughs> yeah. Just the people from Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have a new type of consumer here. Uh, what, what kind of consumer? Us. We did not throw away our mobile device. Oh, no, my N95. I will never throw away in the garbage. No, I carry with me. Uh, so you don't wait, want, want to waste that as consumer. I want to, to waste my in 95. I want to carry on with me. And we can uh, take advantage of, of this to create new experience, new software, and some kind of new, new trends today. One of them is open source hardware. Can you talk to us? Well, open source hardware is the concept that you can take the hardware, distribute, make money. Uh, you don't have paid Patents, patents. Uh, is mostly for do-it-yourself consumers, and is a very exciting market because we uh, open source hardware bring back the control of the hardware to the user. That's the good part, and it's a very big and growing community all around the world. In Brazil, the people are crazy about doing uh, doing home automation. Uh, doing robotics project and monitoring sensors, we thought they need to buy some something from a company, specific company. Some examples: RapHab is a 3D printer, very famous 3D printer. Makey Makey, I will be using tomorrow. I have another talk tomorrow morning. That I will. I, I'm going to use a banana to change my slides tomorrow. <laughs> Part of Internet of the thing of things now banana, banana can be part of the internet. <laughs> it's amazing. This is the Segway, the, the the open source Segway that you can 
Built by yourself. Less than a half price of the... Yeah, you, you spend $2,000 and you can build one. And have fun with your family. If you have <laughs> kids, you can, you, you can work during the weekend. So it's, a, <laughs> it's kind of a lifestyle to build the things by yourself. And once you start, you cannot stop anymore. And the place and the tools just get bigger. <laughs> it's a great thing. Uh, hacking and having fun with open source hardware is the most important part. Arduino is one of the most famous projects, the last five or seven years, I think, that they, they are making a lot of noise all around the world with a microchip microcontroller that is so small, 2K two, two, uh, uh, of run memory, and you can do even uh, Fourier transforming inside an Arduino, so it's good. Um, Arduino is very simple. It's a ba based on this microcontroller from HTML. You can do the PCB by yourself. In Brazil, we teach kids how to produce an Arduino from the scratch. They, they do all the parts of the, the process of creating a board. It's very easy to draw and do it yourself. Uh, it's cheap, $30. Now we have Raspberry Pi with the same cost, but it's for different proposals, I believe. And the full language is Whiting, which is based on, on C and C++, which is, I, I used to say that uh, Whiting is almost Java. It's a, a programming language that, that would like to be Java, but can't be Java, because the resource inside Arduino is too small, and, well, that's the board, the, the, the original board, uh, that's the model, but it's the most famous board, the blue one. So you have the microcontroller, USB, it's very strong, you can touch the components, you can fix by yourself the components, and it's different from uh, when you have an ARM-based board, uh, ARM, uh, ARM boards are very sensitive. And if you have some electrical uh, uh, contact with the, that board, you just, you know, so you lose the board because it's hard to fix by yourself. So you have many advantages here, especially when you are starting uh, in this area. And you have different types of Arduino. You know, Arduino, basic Arduino. This is the lily pad to put inside the clothes. And you can, you can hack a cloth, and you can have signals, LEDs in your clothes, and you can have some jackets special for blind people, and you can think about this kind of project. Arduino Mega, which is a most, more powerful board, and this one is our Arduino that we are producing in Brazil, and we are using for educational proposal. And this one is the Arduino that we are uh, uh, demonstrating here, but it's the same as a regular Arduino, but we already have some sensors and a motor driver, and just with this board you can do home automation and robotics project without soldering. And the Bluetooth modeling. The, the Bluetooth connector, so that's the idea. Well, why use Java ME with Arduino, or I'm talking about Arduino, but you can think about any other microcontroller that you used to use. Uh, well, if you work with Arduino or some limited microcontroller and you need to put, and you need to put a graphical LCD in the board, you are going to spend a lot of money and you are going to use Many are yours to do that. A lot of time too. A lot of time too. And you have a special library for Arduino. Sometimes this library doesn't talk with another library because Arduino is not Java. So you have the, li the C++ library hell. And Arduino plus G GPS can be expensive. Arduino, the, the, the memory 
to, to, to store data. You just have 2K of memory. So why not use an Arduino and use your old Java ME phone to debug and to have a screen uh, to debug your Arduino. How we can do it? This integration we can do wireless integration using uh, IP, wireless network, or you can use Bluetooth. The wireless module for Arduino is kind of expensive, and now we have the electric amp, and they have a shield that you can plug the electric amp in this shield and plug the shield in, in, into an Arduino. So it's the cheaper solution to have an Arduino Wi-Fi, but it's energy consuming, the Wi-Fi. But you can do it. It's very easy. You have Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a little more trick to, to work with Bluetooth, but it's also easy. It's not hard. Or you can integrate wired. Like if you have a sunspot, you are going to integrate uh, Sunspot doesn't have Bluetooth and the, 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 the communication, the, the wireless communication uh, is in another, it's not, it's not Wi-Fi and you can do it, this integration wired using I2C, SPI or you can have a USB host device like YoYo board, the same board that Google uses to make the accessory development kit for Android. You can use it also for Java ME. Yeah. Uh, so the Arduino plus Bluetooth integration is very easy. We just need a Bluetooth module that we can find at SparkFan or even in eBay for 10 bucks. Very, very, very cheap. Uh, we connect the module to, to the Arduino with the four pins. Ground, Power and REX TX. Done. So Arduino can make a serial connection with other devices like a Xiaomi device or any kind of, of device that can use a serial communication with Arduino. Uh, in the Java ME side, we, have, we use the J JSR82. JSR82 is supported by a large amount of devices. If you are interested uh, to know, oh, does my device support JSR82? You can enter in this URL, bit.li slash JSR82 list. There's uh, all devices and all device supported, all device that supports JSR82. Uh, in JSR82, depends only on CLBC. Two modes. You can use the cellular, that's the phone, as client or as a server. We have push registry enabled. You can use RFCOM, SDAP, EduCAP, and OBX protocols for protocols. Uh, there is device and service. You have to connect to a devices and ask what services are provided. Then you we in our demo here, we use RFCOM. RFCOM is a protocol that is uh, it's like a serial connection. Emulates a serial connection between the Java ME device and the other device connected via Bluetooth. Uh, it's our first demo with a uh, home uh, image example. Actually, uh, this is just the, the architecture of the thing that we are presenting here. We have the Nokia cell phone. We have this Bluetooth module from SparkFun. This one, the $10 module, actually is the China one. Yeah. But uh, you can find here, it's not... Uh, 30, 39. This, this one is 39. Yeah. Uh, but it's very good, especially if you are doing presentations. <laughs> and, uh, because it can deal with the Wi-Fi network if you have many signals that this Bluetooth module can work uh, together with another kind of noise. So it modulates the noise and have some, some special thing inside this module. And 
we have uh, our Arduino board. We are we plug it, this module in this connector, which is the RXTX connector. We have a relay board here. Our board I'll have already have a light sensor and temperature sensor. So we can control using our device. We can control two apps and we can monitor those two sensors. Also, we have here, uh, this is a RGB LED stripe. So we are going to show how to change the colors of your house using uh, your phone. What did you say the third board was? The third, th this one is a relay board. Okay, it's a relay board. So, that's um, all. Let's show the, the, the application. So let's see how we can do it. Quinta, you are the cameraman. So here I'm going to start the application. Uh, I'm using Things Mobile which is uh, which is a reference a, a reference implementation of our API for the uh, Java ME and let's start the application the nightly build version already have a splash screen this one doesn't have but now already has it in another phone. Yeah. So that's the, the application. We are using Luit to make it like better, the, the design better. Does someone here knows Luit? Luit? Yeah, okay. So the application already knows the Bluetooth modules that we are using here. I did the setup before the talk because if I ask to discover, it will discover all the devices <coughs> in the audience and we'll take some time to, to make the presentation. So we have a framework called Things Mobile that it can help you to discover and store the, the address of the Bluetooth module. So we already did the setup here. Thank you for talking. Ah, <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, let's see the relay. So the first connection will take more time I'm going to click here to turn on the relay and the cell phone will ask to connect using Bluetooth. So I'm allowing the cell phone to use Bluetooth. It's starting the connection. So now we are connected to the Bluetooth module and I can click here, turn on and turn off the lamp or anything else plug it in a, the, 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 the socket. So uh, we have a here another relay represented by a cough machine, but it's not a cough machine. And, uh, okay, no problem. The, 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 the wire here is broken, but the relay, ah, uh, no, no. Are, are you hearing the, the relay switching? Okay. Whoops, that's okay. The other one was the green, yeah? The other one is not like that. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Ah, okay. Oh. Much better now. Thank you. <laughs> so we have the control. It's fast, and the kids can have a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> yeah. And the RGB. Now let's see. Let's see the RGB. <coughs> LED stripe. So red. I can put. Uh, I can set up the amount of red that I want. I can combine the colors here. So let's turn off the red. Turn on the green, turn off the green, and the blue, and let's combine some green and red. So, is there some designer here? Hmm. No? This stripe is very useful for, for Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas API. Uh, you have here the light sensor. Okay. okay. The light sensor. And, oops, no problem. Medium. Medium. So let's put my hand 
in the light sensor and see how so oops dark medium uh, and the temperature sensor uh, the first reading is kind of crazy but the next is okay 21 it's cool it's cool makes sense 21 and okay this part of the things mobile is for home automation the same app can control this robot so let's put the robot here oh, and it's working? the the good thing is that our things mobile framework can work with multiple Bluetooth device in the same app and it can help you to manage and to store the Bluetooth address and everything so the first connection will take more time So Things API, which is behind the robot and uh, the, the, the home automation board, uh, is an API that uh, things we, we, we understand things as sensors, motors, robots, coffee machine, lamps, bananas, <laughs> and everything that you can integrate in, uh, in the internet. And our API promotes the integration between Java ME, SC, EE, and we are using EJBs. We have a layer with EJBs to schedule the, the, the relay, so you can schedule your cough machine using Java E. And you can use JMS to control all these stuff using Twitter. And you can tweet to your house, and you can follow your house, and, 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 and follow the sensors of your house using Twitter or, or any other uh, social uh, 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 and the other good part of Things API is that we have an abstraction for Bluetooth devices, serial device, IP device, and also Zigbee device. So we try to make something that it's very easy to use. You say like things, things dot something dot send command. So it's very very simple API and is a uniform API, the same interface that we implemented in the Java ME is the same in the Java E space. So it's very nice. And we are launching this new API, it's not ready yet. We have a prototype, if you want to, 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 to see the prototype, we can send it to you, but we, it, it is not a, a public <coughs> project uh, because we are working on, actually, from the last year to this year, we just refactor our home automation project to support robotics and we said, oh, let's do something very generic for Internet of Things. There is some opportunity for this kind of API. And tomorrow in our talk, we are going to show Kinect uh, instruments, musical instruments integrated with the Things API. And it will be very fun, our session uh, tomorrow, more demos. This is a piece of code of the prototype version. 
do you have a source code that you use to do that available for us to download? Yeah, oh, no, it's not no. available. The, the web, the things API, the website will be things API dot org, but it's not uh, launched yet. But I can send you. Right, you. I mean just the stuff that you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can send you, but it's not available to download yet. Okay. Will uh, it be? What? Will it be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're gonna post it eventually? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I used to post my Twitter the, the, the news about this kind of project, but we may have good news for this project, very good news. So, we so have sometime after the conference, you'll put it up? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Have you tried with the extra car? Which? The extra car? Have you tried to with the extra vehicle, like car? No. 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 Not yet. Okay. <laughs> And now we are here in California buying all the devices that we can and testing all the devices. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. You buy here and the other day UPS, oh, the other device. You know, so we pray for the delivery. <laughs> so here is the paradise for us. So the code is very simple. Uh, things dot Bluetooth, you specify the, 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 the Bluetooth URL with the, the address of your Bluetooth and send the command to the Bluetooth to the to the device that you are communicating. As you can see the the middleware behind it uh, allow you to to make uh, easily connect to your if you are Arduino stuff or with your other device stuff. Uh, even the discovery part of Bluetooth yeah. is uh, uh, more easy using our API. Already implemented. What's the, what's the range on one of those Bluetooth devices? Uh, they pay on the module. Right. The so smartphone, they have two models. The blue, the blue is made uh, silver and the gold. And the gold, they set in the <laughs> website that is uh, 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 kind of 30 meters, but it's not. <laughs> and so uh, it's for kind of five meters max. Uh, there's a JSI implementation like it, uh, Blue Cove. Yeah. Blue Cove. No, for desktop we are using RxGx. It's terrible, but we now are experts of RxGx communication. But uh, we don't have. Uh, 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 we didn't use Blue Cove because they just stopped the project. It's not running anymore. But with Internet of Things, I think that they are going to. To uh, to reborn this kind of yeah. because we need for the desktop. Wow, there is life beyond phones, <laughs> and I have a sunspot. Roger Brinkley, um, please tell Roger Brinkley that I do not have an Oracle <laughs> spot. Please. Oracle spot. Uh, this is a very nice device, and. It was expensive for the time that they, they launched the device, but uh, like many things that Sun used to do, they are uh, they are ahead. ahead. They are they, they were ahead. So you have the board uh, with a sensor board with accelerometer, LEDs, light sensor, high current driver for Model C motors. And you have a three octal register, so you can multiply your I/O. <coughs> uh, one of the first hard projects that I did was to integrate my Sunspot with Arduino, and I did uh, uh, using a, uh, the Sunspot is a, a three volt device, and Arduino you have Arduino three volt, but I use it a five volt, so I need to make a conversion. And I did uh, the conversion by myself. I didn't use any kind of CI to do that. I used transistors. And it's just one-way communication. It's like from Sunspot to Arduino. And I, for my project, I didn't have the, the need to, to communicate from Arduino to the Sunspot. And this project is just a reference. You have a video here where I'm talking about this project. 
and I am controlling a very a very nice robot that is a spider, a spider robot. that I, I bought in the Maker Fair many years ago <laughs> when I went for the first time to Maker Fair and spent two thousand dollars buying everything that I sell. <laughs> <laughs> the egg painter too? Uh, I, I bought I, I bought a egg uh, egg printer. Egg printer, right? Yeah. And put an egg and brown the egg very right? yeah. <laughs> so we have here some links: Arduino, SparkFun, Things API, SunSpot. Sun. Our company, sorry. My company, Triangulum Solutions. dot com. dot br. So we need some. if you we, if you want to to make some contact, just drop a line, and we can we can uh, contact you and give more information. Pieces of code. And once we start the Things API project, we will look for help. And if you are interested in working, or if you already work with open source hardware, Arduino stuff, Things API is a, a nice project for you to, uh, to use and may collaborate with us. So we have more five minutes for QA. If I email you here, would you send me that code? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Are we planning to deliver the, the things they've got tomorrow? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. First day. Uh, yeah. Right. Something change. Good change. And we need to wait more time to launch. And, uh, okay, that's our contact. Thanks a lot being here. It's a great thing to choose the talks. Java one, many, many talks happening and we are happy to have you here. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for This was a great <laughs> Sorry?